Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali. In this uh, video, I'm going to talk about an aspect of the distribution of gas speeds that uh, is called the Boltzmann-Maxwell distribution. So this is a continuation of the topic of the kinetic molecular theory after we were uh, able to calculate the average kinetic energy of a mole of a gas sample and then we can also calculate the root mean square velocity, the average velocity. Uh, for a gas sample. The question then is, you know, what what is the picture of these gases as they're moving around randomly in that container? <clears throat> so it's it's useful to kind of talk a little bit about how uh, initially speed of the gases were considered. So remember that I, I said that the, the person who first kind of came up with a theory to explain the behavior of gases was Rudolf Clausius and he uh, basically assumed that if you have a gas particle at a particular um, temperature, all the gases, um, you know, if they are, have the same molar mass, they all have the same speed, okay? So in other words, all nitrogen gas would have, you know, a certain speed at, at a particular temperature. Uh, this uh, turned out to be not the uh, correct conclusion, that not all the the gases have the same speed at a given temperature. In fact, um, what the gases, you know, if you have, let's say, a thousand gas particles in a particular container, even though they're all the same type of gas, and there were, let's say, they're all nitrogen gas, for example, they don't all have the same speed, but they actually show a range of speed or velocity in uh, the, the and that would be the best way to kind of explain how gases behave. So the person for, who first realized this was James Maxwell. So he came up with a, 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 an explanation that there, there needs to be a way to show that the gas speeds are actually distributed over a particular range. Later on, Boltzmann um, come in with kind of the same explanation with also a, a, a you know a equation to kind of show how this distribution works. So this speed distribution is often called the uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann speed distribution for gas particles and so they predicted that there's a, a particular distribution for these gas particles and they provide equations to show how you can calculate this uh, speed distribution. <clears throat> now uh, at the time they proposed this there, there, there was no experiment to verify the prediction but you know about 50 years or so later uh, the technology again had uh, moved to the point that it was there people were able to actually do experiments to measure molecular speed and at that point they showed that it's true that you know within a sample of gas you actually have particles of different speed and they're distributed uh, basically as predicted by Maxwell and Boltzmann okay so what I'm going to do now is go back to that ideal gas simulation that I used before for the empirical um, gas laws, right? I'm going to go back there and kind of explain what this distribution is and what, what it looks like and what is the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve looks like, okay? Okay, so we're back on this uh, simulation for the gases, right? Remember we use this for the empirical gas laws as well. If you remember that the gases are basically inside this container, that's fitted with a, a with a movable piston so you can change the volume and then there's a way to basically insert more gases if you want it so you can increase the number of moles of gas. Currently we have one mole of helium which is uh, illustrated by this uh, by this uh, green uh, dot here and then you can also add neon if you want which is a heavier gas and that's illustrated by the blue colored uh, spheres or, or circles. And what I want to do is show this, uh, what I mean by this Maxwell or uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, okay? So the plot that's shown on this side is a plot of velocity, okay? This is a plot where the y-axis of this uh, curve is uh, the number of particles, okay? So let me pause this a little bit. So the y-axis here is showing the number of particles. Uh, that have a particular velocity. So the x-axis here is velocity, okay? So the velocity starts from very low on this side, which is, you know, zero, for example, going to um, very high speed. And as you can see, even with this collection of particles, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten particles, 
there's a distribution of speed, right? All the particles have different speeds as they're moving around in this gas particle. And that's what the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is. So, in fact, this curve is simulated <clears throat> based on that assumption of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which is what we observe experimentally with gases. You notice that one of these dots is red. Uh, that's the dot that we mark. So, in other words, it makes it easier for you to follow uh, a particular gas particle that you're interested in. So we can change this mark to other dots if you want to. Like, see, I'm, I'm clicking on this and that changes the dot that you want to follow. But basically, it just allows you to follow one particular dot as it goes travel around in this particular container. Um, and it's a little hard to see the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution with only 10 gas particles. So what I'm going to do is just increase this to... Um, a, a larger number of gas particle. In fact, I'm going to max it out to the total, you know, so that it's the number of moles is maxed out. And then you can see a little better distribution. Um, and I'll point out uh, what this line represents in a second. So you remember that we talked about that root mean square velocity and we know how to calculate it. That's what we call the average speed of the collection of gas particle, okay? That's symbolized by this line right here. So this line corresponds to the average speed of the 10 gas particles we have in this particular sample. But as you can see, none of the gas particles actually has exactly that average speed, right? So uh, in fact, you know, you some of them, obviously about half of these gas particles are slower than the average speed and about half, a little bit, you know, fewer than half are faster, okay? And that's how it is in any kind of gas distribution. You always have some of them being slower and some of them being faster. So I'm going to resume this and then just put a lot of gas particles in here. Now you can see this distribution a little bit better. So I'm going to pause this at now and show you, okay? So at any particular uh, time point, okay, you can see that there is a, this is a velocity of zero, this is velocity that's really high, okay? You can see that there's a certain number of gas that has that particular velocity, right? So this is, um, you know, a lot, uh, quite a few gases. Remember, the y-axis measures the number of gas particles that have that velocity. So let's say this is, I don't know, 150 meters per second or something. So there's a certain, certain number of gas particles with that particular speed. And then this one maybe is 160 meters per second. There's a fewer of them and then so on and so forth. And you see that your red uh, dot here at this point is actually going quite fast, okay? But as soon as it collides, then it's going to change its velocity, and then it's going to basically jump back and forth in this uh, velocity distribution. Now, at any particular time point, you can pause this simulation and basically draw a, a curve, which is shown by this line right here. Draw a curve that shows how the distribution of the particles um, uh, is at that given time point, okay? That's what we call the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is this curve right here, okay? Um, so what this curve allows you to do is basically tells you, well, how many of the particles, you know, what is the percentage of particles that currently has speed, uh, has a particular speed. So let's say if you compare it to the root mean square velocity speed, which is this vertical line right here, then, you know, about, um, you know, probably about more than half of them are slower, and then a little bit less than half are faster than that. But because the faster one is quite a lot faster, they kind of push the average that way a little bit, okay? So that's what the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is. And we'll talk a little bit about why that's important. Why is it that categorizing the speed of the different particles is important, okay? Um, so let's, you know, again, kind of resume this and show you Right, so you, you see that the, the, the curve itself doesn't change, right? The curve itself at a given temperature and for a given gas stays exactly the same. So you see that the shape of this stays the same, even though the actual individual velocities keep changing. But overall, if you actually plot this, right, and you, you, you see that the curve stays the same. And that's the importance of it is that Maxwell and Boltzmann basically uh, were able to um, predict what the... Uh, distribution of speed will be at a particular temperature for a given gas, okay? Um, in the next video, we'll talk about some features of this uh, distribution, but right now, that's what you, you want to be able to see. And you, you, as I mentioned earlier, you see your, the red dot, the, 
the gas particle that's um, you know uh, labeled it's moving around quite a bit the velocity because as it's moving here of course it's colliding with uh, the other particles and as a result its velocity is also changed okay